you know when you go up there. All right. Good morning to everyone that is here this morning. And uh, you can see that Pastor Mark is not up here. Pastor Mark and Cindy are celebrating Mother's Day with Cindy's mother up in the Oregon area. And so it is, we definitely miss them. And then Christian, if you look at your bulletin that you have as we're getting ready to sing, Christian was going to actually lead worship. And uh, Christian, what, last year or sometime, sometime last year, uh, became actually lactose intolerant. His sister, lactose intolerant, and he is lactose intolerant. And Connie made a very special homemade dish yesterday, and it was butter and garlic noodles, and he loved it. And then he realizes that butter, we all know, is made from dairy, and so he is miserable this morning. And so... <laughs> Man, he goes up to his mom, what, what, what did we have last night? And so Christian's not going to be leading the worship, and so I'm going to, me and Lauren are going to kind of join in and uh, uh, bring us worship this morning. But it is so good to have each and every one of you. Um, I actually do not have a bulletin that has, uh, uh, so I'm going to pause, I'm gonna, we're, we're going to pause. This, this is going to be very informal. Some things are forgotten, and so, uh, and, or I could just say it this way. I Warren? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. It says in Galatians chapter 3, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were, about, who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No man can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. The sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our heart long for to be overcome by your presence Lord let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. 
God, we are so grateful to be in this place this morning, um, always surrounded by your presence, but we do uh, just recognize as we gather together, children, as it was mentioned in Scripture earlier, we gather together to worship you. We ask, God, that you accept our praises unto you this day as we worship together. In Jesus' holy name, amen. We're going to sing a song, and I know a lot of times we don't stand up, but you know what? This song's called Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. So if you can, go ahead and stand up. If you can't, that's okay. Sit down. But we're going to sing this. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is conquered, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trump. Call obey to do the mighty conflict in this his glorious day. You that are not faithful against unnumbered foes, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength the Stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, be never The strife will not be long This day the noise of battle The next the victor song To those who conquer evil A crown of life shall be They with the king of glory Shall reign eternally So this morning, uh, well, let me get my notes over here. Let me make it big and official, big and official. You ready? Welcome, 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 everyone. I'm so glad you're here this morning and uh, worshiping with us. A happy Mother's Day to the mothers that are here. Um, I, know, I heard there was some earlier conversation on some Mother Day, Mother, Mother's Day things and the events that have taken place. So happy Mother's Day to you. And happy Mother's Day to those that, as we welcome those that are listening on the conference call this morning, and uh, happy Mother's Day to those that are listening, as well as those that are actually watching us on Facebook right now. Uh, some watch live and some watch later in the day, maybe. Happy Mother's Day. And if you watch later in the week, I hope you had a great Mother's Day. All right. So happy Mother's Day and welcome to everyone. In the form of announcements, it's in your bulletin this morning, uh, Pastor Mark will be back, and he will be uh, bringing us through Matthew chapter, starting at chapter 26, and more than likely he might get all the way through to the end of the, chap of, uh, the book of Matthew. So he will be here Wednesday for our 4 p.m. 
Bible study downstairs. And if you need, you can always click on uh, Zoom. We did my Zoom account this past week. Uh, like I said, Pastor Mark will be back. So you can use Cindy's that she uses all the time, I believe. And if you need it, uh, let me know or let Cindy know. And you can then Zoom right along on that Bible study. Always on Sunday morning at 1045, we'll have worship and some kid zone activities that take place during that time where they're learning. Uh, what's today? Today is where Jesus goes to the temple at 12 years old. And so they're going to learn a little bit that today. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, even when I have meetings and stuff, we still have the doors open. If you need to come and use free Wi-Fi, or if you want to come and just have a uh, a time of space where we can just kind of talk and have have a good by talking and just have conversation. Uh, come out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, anytime between one and three p.m. and we'll gather downstairs. Every Wednesday, um, I do and I say this all the time. <clears throat> I do something personally. It's called Hello Again Wednesday, and so on Wednesdays, um, sometimes for our time, it's usually in where anywhere between ten and 1 p.m. on a Wednesday Pacific time, I will do a thing called Hello Again Wednesday. I'll talk about all kinds of things. Some are funny, some are dead serious, and some are just inspirational, I would hope. And uh, then always at the end of that Hello Again Wednesday is the big invite for, <clears throat> excuse me, in a couple hours, that Wednesday night Bible study. And so if you want to check those things out on your bulletin, there is... Um, our website, which is CoverCityChurchOfGod.org, our Facebook page with uh, Culver City Church of God Ministries, and all of that stuff that takes place on the big welcome. As you can see this morning, you know, with uh, things happening, there's uh, just some issues that are taking place with individuals that are still sick. Some are still choosing not to be here. Um, go ahead and make sure you make an effort to. Uh, connect. Uh, I talked to an I talked to an individual who talked to another individual in the church and was very excited to just have communication over the phone and to encourage one another. And so uh, go ahead and do that. And if you ever need uh, addresses or phone numbers or anything like that um, of the people who have given permission to have that contact, just let me know. And I will make sure that you have that um, for connecting with one another this morning. So let us continue in worship. Oh, before I do that, I want to make sure I do not forget. Um, we do have offering plates at the front and in the, in the middle of the sanctuary. And I, I, do, that's, I do not want to slip up and ever forget to thank you for giving it does help for, um, we're going to be working on sending uh, offerings to the missionaries that we've been praying for. Um, we're not, so we're not going to just pray for them. We're going to support them financially also. And that, their names are Corey and, and Abby Stocksdale with their kids, their three kids in Botswana, uh, Africa. And so uh, your finances that you give, your gifts that you give help uh, support a mission field um, where we are not at. And then there's other things that take place, and we want to just make sure we thank you, and the church appreciates your giving. And most of all, God God loves a cheerful giver. So whatever he has on your heart, God loves you, and that loves you so much because you have decided to give to him, not to a person or not to a church or, or anything like that. You give to God, and then God inspires to use it for his glory. So Thank you very much. And uh, lastly, if because I know there's some people, they have the ability to give online. You can with just a simple click. At uh, if you go to our uh, our our website and go down the bottom, it says donate, and that gives you one click, and you can give to the church that way. Ready, Miss Daniela. All right. Bye. 
by his blood I'm whole. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to his name. He brings me through affliction. He leaves me not alone. He's with me in temptation. He keeps me for his own. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to his name. He keeps me firm and faithful. His love I do enjoy. For this I shall be grateful and live in his it is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful. It is truly wonderful what the Lord has done. Glory to his name. Amen. I always like that song. It is, you know, more than just words, it is it is truly, truly wonderful when we think about what God has done for us. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep has said, I'll never forsake thee, promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light, in Him is no darkness, ever I'm walking close to His side. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above. Singing His praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight flooding my soul with glory divine hallelujah i am rejoicing singing his praises jesus is mine as we are getting ready to go into a time of prayer together there is, uh, in your bulletin, um, you can, as we're singing these two verses, if you like, you can look through. Um, there is changes within, compared to last week's. Um, there, I will say a, some praises, too. Um, Cleta, we have been praying for you, and, uh, and it is so good to see Cleta, because Cleta has taken a couple of falls, um, <laughs> and she has the stories to tell, and, uh, um, the latest was probably was Wednesday here at the church. And so uh, we've been praying for Cleta. And it's so I say praise because it's good to see her um, this morning worshiping with us. There's other individuals. Alan has, oh, there, Alan, I see Alan now. Um, he has had uh, an eye infection that he was dealing with. And is it getting better, Alan? Getting better. So we will continue to pray for Alan. 
And then there's others within that list uh, that need healing. There are those that are dealing with finances and, and things like that. We are, as I mentioned, we have missionaries that we are praying for. We continue to pray for them along with the church, um, uh, the things that are taking place with the church, the leadership of the church, those that are uh, distant in this time frame of uh, the pandemic, such as uh, Phyllis, who is recuperating. We have the Foley's that we are praying for. We have the uh, Bud and Jane Broadwell that we're praying for. Um, as, they, everyone jo as they join or check in and stuff like that, we want to continue to uplift our friends, especially of the church and those that are outside the church as we connect. Uh, Susan, she's not here this morning, but she did call me yesterday. She had a desperate prayer for a friend of hers. Hopefully I remember the name correctly as Margaret, who uh, um, had something with a skin issue. And when she went in, uh, Susan was telling me it was going to require some blood transfusion. They were going to do something in the ER well into the evening last night. And so they either kept her or she sent, was sent home around 3 a.m. And so Susan was in uh, wanting prayer for her friend. What a great thing. And so we want to remember those. There's many more, I'm sure. And so I have them listed. If there's things on your heart um, that you would like to have you remembered, especially during prayer, um, I don't need to know all the details, but if you would like me, during the week I remember people who raise their hand and say, I really need some more prayer. Um, we're always praying for you, but, uh, and I want to remember, uh, just continue to really pray, especially on my heart. Besides the calendars that we have and prayer requests that come in, if you raise your hand and you would like me to pray for you this week, I will definitely, I will remember to pray for you and pray for you and uh, throughout this week especially and to continue to pray. Yes, thank you. I will be praying especially for you. I, I do pray for you always. Everyone in the church, I pray. I have, it's like I go down this list, but I do remember especially when hands are raised. So this morning as we sing uh, two verses before we pray, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, oh, what words I hear him say. Happy place so near, so precious. May it find me there each day. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, I would look upon the past. For his love has been so gracious, it has won my heart at last. Bless me, O oh my Savior, bless me. I sit low at thy feet, oh, look down in love upon me, let me see thy face so sweet, save me, Lord, the mind of Jesus, keep me holy as he is, may I prove I've been with Jesus, who all my righteousness. Shall we pray? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, God, as we come to you right now, God, we come to you with grateful hearts. God, we thank you that you have been with us, that you have blessed us, that you have um, been with us throughout this week. God, thank you that, that you guide and you direct us and, and you show us and you love us. God, and as we come to you, there are so many needs that are upon our hearts. There are so many people that we know that, that need a touch from you, be it through physical healing, emotional healing, financial healing. God, we just, 
know that you know the things that are on our hearts. And, and I thank you that you are a God that reaches deep down inside us and knows everything and loves us and bestows grace and mercy on us. God, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that we can always come to you with everything. And God, as we pray, Lord, we want to especially pray that you would continue to show your presence, to guide and direct us. God, that your Holy Spirit would ignite within us a fire to serve you, to show others you, to become a part of a bigger community, God. We just pray, Lord, that you would ignite within each one of us that's here that fire. God, I pray that you would be with Brent as he brings the words to us that, that you have laid on his heart. God, that you would direct his words, that you would um, bestow your Holy Spirit upon them. And God, most of all, I pray for us that are listening, that our ears and our hearts would be open and soft to your Holy Spirits. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would just um, be with our church, God, as, as we um, continue to try to do your work, as we continue to, to um, show the neighborhood you. God, I pray that you would help us to know the right paths to go. God, thank you, and I praise you right now in the name of Jesus for allowing us to be here this day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading is in Psalms chapter 73, verses 21 through 26. Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant, I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet I still belong to you, you hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. Washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. 
with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. From the door of an orphanage to the house of the king, no longer an outcast, a new song I sing. From rags unto riches, from the weak to the strong, I'm not worthy to be here, but praise God I belong. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood, joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this side, or I'm part of the family, the family of God. Our New Testament reading is in Galatians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up. Even though they actually own everything their father even though they <laughs> owned everything their father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children, and we were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of this world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves, to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into heart, into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father, now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Sometimes, don't you just love the teachings when you read um, in the scriptures, people like what Paul, what Paul was writing to a church and the way he was reminding them um, that, you know what, uh, even Christ was born into this world. Even Christ was under a law that was given by his father, yet what he did was just so uh, no one else on the planet could ever do, and it changed it changes life. And I love toward the end of those verses that Lauren was reading that, uh, you know what, just like, just like what Christ what was being taught and what was there, that we, as a child, you know, we are born into this, this, this slavery to sin, and then Christ came at the right time so that we could be a child of God, the heir of God. Ah, man, that's just... Such awesome words to hear. Um, it's an inspiration when you think about it of someone passing along to someone else. These past few weeks, um, that's kind of basically what we have been talking about. What it is to be better together. In, in order, like the, the scriptures that we hear or singing together, these are together things that just make life 100% better. Or I guess you could say a hundred and coaches, coaches always say a hundred and ten percent. This is what we want. Something better than a hundred percent. And that's Christ and the teachings that come our way. It brings us together and builds us up, encourages us, uh, comforts us. There's the list just goes on being better together. As I started this kind of a series, today's the last day of it. Um, on Mother's Day, you're going to find out, well, how is, how is better together connected to mothers? You're going to see in just a moment. Um, as I'm speaking, you can actually turn to 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1. That's where I'm going to be at this morning. And that's where I'm going to actually stick to 
this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 1. This series started off with being better together, and that's this is how we started. It starts with one, and the starting with one was quite obvious. It was starting with Christ. Us personally being better with the Savior together. Then that second week was more inspirational of what takes place when you are with Christ The same thing Christ did, he not only was with the Father together, but he brought it to the disciples. And those exploded because it went from 12, actually with Christ it was as he was connecting, he was connecting with, and you had individual stories. He connected with this one by the water side. He connected with this one that was a tax collector. He connected with this one that was a doctor. He You understand, he just kept connecting, and then there was 12. And those 12 then became uh, more and more. In fact, on the day of Pentecost, we do know a number, another number, and that was uh, 120 were in that room together. Disciples, by disciples, I mean this. These followers of Christ's teaching that got so connected, 120 were in the room and the Holy Spirit came, and then look what happened. More connection. And the scriptures tell us, uh, in one of my favorite books, Acts, that on that day, the 120 advanced to 3,000. Not because 120 did it, because what they were connected with the Savior, they were connected with the Father, they were connected with the Holy Spirit, and then look what happens when that takes place. And so this morning, I'm going to talk about better together is connected with purpose. We went through it some, some of it last week. In fact, I'm sitting there going, man, some of those scriptures at the end of last week's sermon were so great on how you were connected and there were so many purposes that went with it. I, I'm going to just, should I reiterate those? And uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to stick to understanding where purpose comes from when you're connected. It's one of my favorites. Okay, one of my favorite stories of of talking about women, okay, because it's uh, Paul talking to Timothy, and I'm going to get to it in just a moment, and then it ends up there's there's conversation one time about Timothy's mother and his grandmother, and so in my head it's like wow, not only is it Happy Mother's Day, but we're going to find out that it is um, actually. Um, an understanding in this sense of purpose, these two women were so inspirational with the purpose of God, and it ended up being in the life of Timothy. And we're going to go into it. I, I want you to start to understand uh, this connection that takes place. But it is not just about women this morning, nor is it about just uh, uh, the two ladies. Uh, Timothy's grandmother and Timothy's mother. So if you have your Bibles, I hope you do, or they're in the front of the pew right there. 2 Timothy, starting in chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus. Jesus our Lord. I start with the very first verses. When we're talking about being connected and there's a purpose, we have to have an understanding of what has taken place in this connection that brings that brings us to understanding of purpose. Right now we have Paul who's writing to who? His friend Timothy. Timothy is a very young man who is who's taking in things and learning, and he's learning from one of the best, which is Paul. And Paul has such a love for Timothy that even in his letter, he doesn't just say, hey, my friend, or hey, my buddy. He calls him, to, to, he writes this letter of my dear son. And they're not related that way. He's not Timothy's dad, but there's such a connection. And if I may, if we start to step back and understand with purpose that Um, Christ always pointed to who? God, his father. And who did God consider Christ? Beloved son. Here he is, whom I'm well pleased. Remember when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus at his baptism? Everyone has an understanding of who Jesus is. And so we have Paul with that same kind of concept 
when he's talking about connection, he's going to use the God connection in his life with his friend, with his uh, dear friend, Timothy. But we have to have this understanding that it starts off with Christ, which is what Paul did. Man, he's like, not only am I uh, in the will of God, but I'm staying with that kept promise. Jesus told Paul, you know, well, because on the road to Damascus, <laughs> we have this connection where Paul has this understanding from the Savior that there is a promise that is kept, and it's life. And he's about to pass that life on to anyone that will listen, especially to Timothy. And so, but Paul's really cool because it's not, you know, here's the thing about a divine purpose of being connected together. See, some people think it is all about, hey, look at me. It's all about me. It's all about me. And with Paul, he brings us into this understanding. It is all about the kingdom. It's not about us. It's, about, it's not about me personally. It's about the kingdom and the connection that we have. And then you will see in that connection, there's so much more taking place. In verse 3, it goes like this. I thank God whom I serve, as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Remember, this is the writing in this letter. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Wow. Talk about connection. Paul, Paul, in this brief little area here, there's so much. He talks about who? First of all, my ancestors. Uh, my, my ready? Ancestry.com. Where I go through the totem pole, and where I go through the listing, where I go through whatever to find out the ancestors and what they have done that brings to me where I'm at right here. And so he remembers them. And I love it. He says it with a clear conscience. No doubt about it. Well, my ancestors, how they were brought up, how they followed God, eventually comes down to just me in this moment. But then Paul, when we're talking, he looks at the big picture of connection. He, he's writing to his, his dear son, to his friend Timothy. And he says these things that we kind of jump over real quickly, recalling, well, let me back up. One thing Paul was taught was prayer. So when we come up here and from the pulpit or from anywhere in the, in the church and, or from the bulletins, and we're really emphasizing this desire, this need of prayer, we don't just stick a piece of paper in the bulletin just to be trash. It is to remember. And, and, and look what Paul did. As night and day, I constantly remember you in prayer. He and he takes the designation of Timothy. Timothy, I want you to know I am praying for you. You're not off my list. You're not off my radar. And so we emphasize in the church it is the same thing. The people you're not seeing, the people who call upon you, they call upon you. Can you please pray for me? We need to remember and pray, just like Paul is writing here. But there's one thing in verse 4 that's like uh, saying, we kind of jump over sometimes, and that's I recall, recalling your tears. There must be, there, in this connection, it's not just in letters, Paul knew Timothy. Paul was together with Timothy. Paul saw Timothy face to face. Tears was on the cheeks of Timothy. There was something in the life of Timothy where Paul not only prays for him, but I don't want to leave you alone, Timothy. I long to see you again. Man, that's the heart the church needs. Not only with those that are in the congregation, but with those that are outside the congregation. We have to have that desire. It is a purpose, and I will say this, I believe, I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is the purpose of God. Not a, it could be your purpose. I'm not going to take that away, okay? But there's a huge difference between what happens with your purpose that sometimes gives up and God's divine purpose and what takes place. Let's keep going. Verse 5. I am reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in who? Your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded 
now lives in you also. See what I mean by Happy Mother's Day? You have two ladies only mentioned for a moment, but the way they are mentioned is, you know what? Your grandma grew up. Now, for lineage or ancestry.com, Paul only went as far as his grandma. Maybe, you know why? Maybe he saw his grandma. Maybe he saw his mother. For Paul to mention these two ladies in such a way, he saw in them the divine purpose. He saw in them the divine inspiration that grandma did to Eunice. So you know, Grandma Lois has her daughter and brings her daughter up knowing God knowing divine purpose. And then what's, mo what's mom do? What's Eunice do? Passes it along to her son, Paul's dear friend, Paul's dear son. This huge connection. So I can imagine this with Paul, that Paul does not only have a connection with his friend so close, Timothy, but he feels that closeness with his family in order to mention, uh, well, actually, so strongly, because of your mama, because of your grandma, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God, that Jesus, that the Spirit lives within you. Now, if someone, can you imagine that if someone, one of your friends is writing that to you? Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be like, wow, you, you so for me, I walk around, I know I love God. I'm trying all my best to do everything God would have me to do. I believe the Holy Spirit. I talk with God all the time for all this direction, and everything seems to be going pretty good, pretty godly, pretty holy. And someone writes to you and says, you know what? Actually, it does happen this way, I would say. You ever have a job or you go somewhere quite often or like even, you, are you one of those people that go to the grocery store and you kind of hit the same people for cashiers and you draw up this friendship, you, you enjoy, they're nice, so you like that line or you go to the bank and, and you, if you talk to all of the, the three or four tellers, you can, and you do it week after week, that's how we do it with the church, week after week, uh, bring in the donations and, and the gifts to the bank so that we can do God's work and um, not only... There's this huge connection, before I get too off track, um, like the bank, Phyllis made an impact on those at the bank so much. They call her out by name. Where's she at? How's she doing? There's this care. And, and, now, and so I come in, and I bring reports. This is how she's doing. These are the new friendships she's making. Things seem to be going pretty good. She still has some things that she needs to work out. Stuff like you have this conversation. I'm one of those people where I connect with people quite often the same. And can you imagine to be able to have them, this is how it takes place in the world, or all of a sudden, if they didn't know why I was a pastor especially, you know, I, I used to, uh, I worked many jobs. I, you know, I worked it up. My first job was Toys R Us. And that, that, then I got married and realized Toys R Us didn't quite pay enough. <laughs> and so then my second job was working at a hospital. I, did, I, I, I delivered, me and a buddy of mine, we delivered everywhere in the hospital, from the highest of highest offices to the lowest of lowest. We did all the deliveries. And in that time frame, well, besides that, I also delivered uh, dirty laundry. No, I, I picked up dirty laundry and delivered clean clothes. I was a uniform, we call, you know, I delivered uniforms and rugs and stuff like that. Paid commission. I'm telling you, my early thought process in life and, and, and being married and then starting to have kids early on was all about money. Man, you got to support a family. And so I worked for commission doing that. The more you sold, the more money you got. In all of that lifestyle, there would be times where people would all of a sudden go, do you go to church? Are you, a, are you a Christian? There's something about you. I think that's the coolest thing. Some people would regret that. Well, I don't want you to know I'm a follower of Christ. I don't want that. But it, I think it's cool that someone sees something in you. They're inspired by something in your life of what you're doing. And you know it's been passed down. Ready? Mine was passed down from my parents. Who was passed down from my, my, mom's, my mom's mom, my grandma, my grandma Puckett. Man, she even taught, I believe, Sunday school. 
but you just have this upbringing of family, and then someone else sees it. I love this part about Paul. There is something about your grandma, there is something about your mom, and now I know beyond a shadow of a doubt there's something about you, Timothy. So let's, ready? Let's get to what purpose is. What is purpose? I believe it's a how the purpose is of God in our lives is played out. As I was telling that story of my little life of work, I mean, there's a, to tell the truth, you just had a blam of my life, okay? Because in all of that stuff, I have so many, many, many stories that goes with it. But in all of it, I know that God had a divine purpose for me that was inspired by other people all, all through my life. So God has a divine purpose in our connections. We just have to be well, well aware of them. I'm going to be at verse 6. For this reason, in, for, in 2 Timothy, I'm at verse 6, chapter 1. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame. Remember, this is Paul still writing to his buddy, still writing to Timothy. I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave us, um, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Let me pause there for just a sec. Understand, as, as, as Paul is writing to his friend Timothy, there's so much. Man, just so you know, I know that even as we prayed together, see, in the Church of God, I know we are in a pandemic. I know we have not done it in a very long time. But in the Church of God movement, what we do is we do, if someone has some a, a special need and they want people to pray for them, we have people, we take that one scripture and really to the heart. You know, call upon the people. It says call upon the elders of the church. Call upon the people. Those who believe God answers prayer. Let them gather around you. Let them put their hands upon you as they pray. And so Paul, I understand this here. Paul says, you know, remember that time, Timothy, when I laid my hands on you and, and we prayed? The Holy Spirit with God's power, it inspires us. We're not afraid. We're not ashamed. We not only have his power, we have his love and his discipline. So join with me, Timothy, in all that I do. Join with me, not with me, but with God's power. Join with me. Verse 9, he saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. I'm going to stop there for just a sec. The, the, the way he writes here is just so awesome because he's so personal and then he's so connected group-wise and he talks about us together. Timothy, us together. Look what happened with God's purpose with us together. It's not our power, but it was God's purpose and his grace. And he saved us. And, and never forget the little line there. What did God in all of this connection, what did God in all of this uh, ancestry that, that helped you along and, and gave you knowledge and gave you um, uh, passed down everything, with all of this, what does the one main purpose lead to? A holy life. He has saved us, and he didn't just save us. He called us to a holy life. And a lot of times we like to skip over that scripture. We, we find it very difficult. But I'm going to tell you what, when you're connected to God and his purpose, you can live a holy life. Why? Once again, back up. By his power, by his love, by his self-discipline, by listening to him, by, by talking to him, you're going to find you can live a holy life. And it goes like this. I'm going to continue on. I'm finishing up verse 9. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Ooh, wow. God had this all planned out. A holy life by you and connected with others, all planned out by God. He's ready. But it has now been revealed, verse 10, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of who? 
our Savior, Christ Jesus. Who has, talk about power, are you ready? Who has destroyed death, has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And this gospel, I was appointed a herald and, the, and an apostle and a teacher. Jesus Christ appeared. I, I don't know about you, when I read letters like this, I can always go back to when someone talks about the appearing of Christ, the easiest thought is what for me? I'll, I'll just say for me, Christmas. Jesus appeared to the world Christmas. Was it powerful? Man, there was a whole host of angels that announced it. Christmas up to the world, all that takes place. Can you imagine? And, and I know the kids learning about Jesus, 12 years old, goes to the, uh, uh, the temple. And the part of the story that a lot of people remember is, oh, by the way, he was lost for three days. His mom and dad, Mary and Joseph, had no idea where he was at. Thought he was with so-and-so. Don't know where he's at. Now we got to go back. And I don't know, here, the scripture doesn't do it this way. But if you ever have to backtrack as a parent, you're like, what in the world? Three days I have not seen that. When I get that kid. <laughs> I mean, that's his real life. Okay? It's not in the scripture. But I wonder how that three-day walk to find their son, Jesus Christ, in the temple really went. But I do know this. When they get there, the awe that takes place because Jesus is in the temple and, and just giving, uh, they're like in awe of a 12-year-old 12 12 year knowing what he has known. But from the beginning of time, may I say this, it is because Paul passing all these stories down is because Paul knows this of what Christ did. He was revealed to the world and we should never forget, just like Paul does, does, did not forget, Christ destroyed death and brought immortality, brought life to those who will follow him. And in this letter, Paul's almost reminding Timothy, and just by the way, just so you don't forget, I told you right from the beginning of the letter, my, my friend Timothy, that it's all about you. I love you. I miss you. Your tears. I, I, I want to find pure joy as I, as I gather together with you. And then I remind you how powerful you are in God. And he goes through all of this. And it comes to a point, reminding Timothy, I believe, you know how we pass things down? God called me as an apostle. God called me as a teacher. And God appointed me to tell this story. I wonder if Timmy, Timothy read that and thought, you know what? I wonder how much God has for me to pass along to someone else. What is the purpose I have in being connected? Remember I told you, Timothy's taken everything in from, from Paul. What, just to hold it for himself? No, to be that next generation. See, a lot of times in church, it's like, oh, the church is getting old, old, old. Well, you know, we're all getting old, but there's always a generation that follows behind until God calls us home. So let's do our part to pass along. Let's be the grandmother. If you want to talk about old people, let's be the grandmother. What an inspiration Lois was. I could be that. Well, not Lois. I can be maybe... Lenny or something like that. <laughs> I can, you know, I can, you know what I'm talking about? As, as, a, as a, a, a grandfather, I can pass along. As a father, I can pass along. As a mother, Eunice passed along. And so I believe Paul's inspiring Timothy. Just know this. It's to you too. To you too. To be an ambassador of the, uh, 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 appointed or an ambassador. Now that's other scripture. Let's, let me go on. Verse 12. That is why I am suffering as I am. See, remember Paul's in prison. That's why I'm suffering. That's why things are coming my way. Because what I'm doing for my Savior. Yet this is no cause for shame. See, some people read this and like, what? Understand this. No matter what Paul's going through, he's still trying to inspire. He's still trying to encourage. You know what? Whatever I'm going through, I want you to know when you go through it, it's no cause for shame because I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted unto him that day. We sing a song. Um, there's a song in our hymnal. It is, I, I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him this day. 
I am persuaded. That means someone said something to you, convinced you, and now you're persuaded, and you commit your whole self to the Savior. You commit yourself to the walk. You commit yourself to that holy life that is written in this letter. And that's how Paul writes it. Man. And not only that, but I know God has it for me. Verse 13. We're about to get ready to close. Verse 13. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. What a great closer in this section where Paul is talking to his friend Timothy, talking about the, 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 what he has had passed down to him. And he comes in with this, from which I'm going to say it this way. He heard stuff from his mom and his grandmother. We know that. But Paul reminds him, guess you don't get just a teaching there. There's others that inspire your life and a purpose for God. And so for me, what I have given to you, you keep it as a pattern. See, sometimes, man, sometimes we take the scriptures and we might read them or take the scriptures or those little devotionals out there and we just read that paragraph and we go, whoop, my day is done. I had my coffee. I had my little uh, pathways and I did my little devotion and I have a coffee. I'm done. No, Paul writes here, you know, what? it should be a pattern. Which means every day it should be what you're doing. It should be who you are. It should, so that when people look at you, they go, man, something's different about you. Because your pattern is different. It's way different than this stinky old world. Your pattern almost looks, ooh, it's got a glow to it. It's got a heavenly glow to it. And it's faith in Christ Jesus. That's what we hold on. That's our pattern. And we should be one of those people that guard it. You know those things? You ever have someone give you something, that it, or as a kid, guard that with your life? Elijah's sitting back there, okay? I'm going to talk about Elijah just for a sec. You know, because we play and we've we're, we're got these, this game system. Um, I don't mean game system. We have this uh, uh, thing we do. It's part of our pattern. <laughs> He's into Pokemon cards. He's into watching Pokemon. And he watches videos about Pokemon. He watches videos about cards. So uh, just so some of you have no idea how this goes, there's a, there's a person that's on a video and they're... Let me show you this package I hear, right here. And, and you know, and we're going to open this up in just about a sec. I love these packages, you know. And they go on and on about packages of Pokemon cards. And then they open it up. You see them slowly tearing open as they're talking. And they pull it out and they go through it. And he is even, um, uh, I don't think Connie understood it, but he is even uh, following the patterns of those of Pokemon. So as he looks through cards, and like the people does on the on YouTube that he watches, if they come up to this one card, it's a, a black ball, and it's real electric, it's, it, and it's called the energy card. And they're like, you get these all the time, they're, you, they're not worth much, okay? You gotta have points. They're not worth much. So they take it and they flick it, you know, so that that energy card flies. That boy got an energy card yesterday. He got a package from, ready? They, they, uh, we live in the age of Amazon. They, they bought something online. They wait for that Amazon truck to come. He parks in front of our driveway and comes out. And they're so excited when they get stuff. And here he has this package of Pokemon cards, right? And he opens it. He goes through it. And he gets that energy card and he flicks it. <laughs> it's, just, it's just an energy card. But I'm going to tell you what. He had a card that uh, he got. And he had seen this on YouTube. Look at this. I have, it's rare, right? It's a rare card. And here, seven years old, and, and knowing uh, financial gains, it's a rare card. His mom's sitting in, in the, in the uh, recliner. She Googles, this, this, we live in the age of electron. She Googles the card. And sure enough, this card, and when you buy a package, it used to be you could buy a package of cards at Dollar Tree for, guess what? A dollar. Um, Target, probably a little bit more. It's probably more in the $3 range, I think, for a pack, one package. And it's probably only six cards, maybe, maybe 10. How many cards, Elijah? 10 cards. 10 cards. He's a, he's a financial wizard. 10 cards is in this one package for $3. And this rare card is worth $37.50, I think. 
And so I tell him, boy, that's the one you put in the, he's got these little card holders with their plastic. And I go, that's the one you slide in there. And, 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 and his grandma, uh, Mama, says, don't trade that one. Don't give that one away. That's not a giveaway card. That is one, are you ready? Going back to verse uh, 14, that's the one you guard. That's the one you hold on to. It's been given to you. It's been deposited to you. It's been given to you. Don't let that one go. It's entrusted to you to keep it. Let's see what value comes of it. See, I tell that story. It is the same thing Paul is writing to his buddy Timothy. You know what? God has placed in you the Holy Spirit. Guard it. It's been deposited in your life. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. Guard it. Only, only ready? Actually, there's what God has placed in him. There's a purpose God has placed within Timothy. And the scripture actually goes, so let the Holy Spirit help you with it. As you, you're not guarding it alone. It's very valuable. It is so valuable that God has given us the Holy Spirit so that our lives are valuable. Let's share it. Lauren, come on up. We're going to sing this last song. I say, let us share it. Okay? Because I don't believe that if you're living the life that, that God has given you, however, he has given you a portion that is not equal to mine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not better than anyone. I'm saying it this way, that God has given you a portion that I don't have. Why? Because he has a divine purpose for this entire planet to know him. And it just so happens he's given you, he's deposited into you this certain thing that you have to give to someone else. They need to see it. And know this, the Holy Spirit will help you do it. Will help you share it. So as we close, if you, you know what, if you're not inspired that way, uh, maybe it'd be this simple. Well, two things. Just ask him. This is your letter to God. You know what, God? Um, I'm I'm the Timothy. I'm the one that's looking to you. I'm trying to take in. I'm trying to hold on to. I'm struggling with it. In fact, you know what? I'm probably the worst Timothy ever. I treated Grandma wrong. I treated mom wrong. I didn't take in nothing they had. I'm doing everything wrong. God, please forgive me. And I'm telling you what, the beauty of it, just like that, you're forgiven. You're an heir. You're a child. You're, you're that, that divine purpose. You're all that was discussed this morning in, first, in 2 Timothy chapter 1. That, it's just instant. So go out and live a holy life. Do your best. Have the Holy Spirit help you. Guard it with your life. It is your life. And those of us that are like, oh, I'm taught, man, I, I know all about the gifting. I know all about the love he has. I know all about the power. I know all about what was said this morning. Well, make sure you're doing that every day, every moment. And maybe we need to be like at the first part of the scripture where you're looking for someone specifically to write to, to connect to, to inspire, to pass down. Be that person. We, every one of us has, has something we have to do in life that is a divine purpose, and it's connected not only with God, but it is also um, connected to others. So as we close, I'm going to pray first, and then we're going to sing uh, this uh, last couple of verses of this last song. God, I thank you for this time that we have had together. Uh, may we be divinely inspired. Uh, may we hold on to what you have given us. There's someone here that is struggling with that. I pray, God, that they have that simple prayer. Of, Just forgive me, God, help and help me. I know that you're instantly ready to just uh, pour over that prayer and do exactly as they have asked, God. That's your purpose. And then may it explode to others. Help us who are followers, living a holy life, continuing to pass on to others. In Jesus' holy name, amen. So sharing with others, send the light. Have it come to us to give to others. We're in G, right, Lauren? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a call comes ringing or the restless wave. Send the light. Send the light. 
are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. have heard the challenge of the call today. Send the light, send the light, and a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine. not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. that uh, are just watching or listening online, they don't, they don't understand sometimes the things that take place such as, just so you know, when, when, you, when you hear me singing words and, and you see words that are a little bit different on the screen, that's because of me, <laughs> late night typing or whatever, and uh, I don't care, forevermore and shore to shore, we'll do it all, <laughs> send the light. It is so good to have each and every one of you here with us this morning. Make sure you pass along to your neighbors and your community and whoever you're in contact with that they see who you are uh, walking in the light. Um, though, like I said, if you see someone that's not here, give them a ring, give them a call, give them a hello. Be back here Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pastor Mark is back. He will be back, I should say. They are celebrating with their, uh, with their mother, uh, uh, Cindy's mom. And but they will be here on Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday at 4 p.m. as we do the Bible study. And next Sunday at 1045, we will be rolling right on through some more stuff. And uh, let me just think through. I think, oh, you know, and happy, happy Mother's Day. And you know what, guys and ladies and girls, not.